Here are three reasons why to subscribe to Fringe Financials on YouTube. Number one, it is free, which is the best price that you can pay for this kind of content. Two, I am completely transparent with all of my investments. And number three, I have a variety of educational videos every single week. Now let's get on with the video. Have you ever been impacted by the increasing prices of goods and services because of inflation? Of course you have. And in today's video, we're going to cover two important concepts that are used in understanding where our prices of goods and services are currently at and where they're going to be heading. If you are excited for this video, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notifications so you do not miss out on any future videos. Now, the two topics that we're going to be covering for today is called our consumer price index, which is CPI and our producer price index, which is PPI. These two topics is what can help us understand where inflation is and possibly where it could be going for the future. So we're going to start off first with CPI or the consumer price index. So what is the consumer price index? Well, think of it as a tool that helps us measure how the prices of goods and services that consumers buy regularly change over time. It's like a big shopping basket containing various items that people typically purchase. For example, let's say that our basket includes items like milk, bread, gasoline, and movie tickets. Now, every month we check the prices of these items and compare them to the prices from the previous month. The percent change in these prices will give us the CPI which tells us how much on average the cost of living has gone up or down. So if the percent change increases from the previous month to the new month, that means we're looking at an increase in spending and that could be that leading indicator of higher inflation. That is something that again, we do not wanna have. We wanna see these percent changes decreasing over time as showing that the prices are cooling off. Now, let's move on to what the producer price index is or the PPI. This one focuses on the perspective of producers. And again, producers are the folks who make goods and services for us. It helps us to understand how much it costs them to produce items. So let's do another example. Imagine we have a company that produces cars. The PPI would look at the prices of the raw materials like steel, rubber, electronics, all those components that go into making a car. If the PPI increases, that means it's getting more expensive for producers to make their products. In this case, it'd be a car. And what happens is that if the producer has to pay more to produce a car or to build a car or any kind of product that we are buying, they have to offset that cost by increasing prices for us. So just like CPI, if the PPI value increases, if that percent increases month over month, that's showing that the producer is paying more for their products to be created. And as a result, they're going to upcharge us more as well. What's really interesting about the CPI and the PPI is that usually the, the PPI data, the producer price index, usually indicates what the CPI is going to be as a result. So if your producer price index is increasing, you're going to see the consumer price increasing a little bit later on down the line, because again, the producers are increasing the prices. And as a result, it's going to make us pay more for the goods and services. So these two key concepts is what can help us understand with where inflation is and where it's going to be going. Now, on my screen right now, I have um, what's going to be happening tomorrow. So tomorrow, August 10th, is going to be the CPI data to be released. And as you can see, this is a preview from Yahoo Finance about what is going to be expected here. So the report is released at 8 30 in the morning. So before the market even opens. So you're going to see a lot of fluctuation happening after 8 30 a.m. You're going to see a lot of market fluctuation happening between stocks, depending on how they digest this important information here. Now, again, if you're looking all the way down here at the bottom here, so we're looking at an increase of 3.3% over the prior year, which will mark the slowest annual increase. So the slowest annual increase isn't too bad. But here's the thing that we have to be focusing on. Over the prior month, consumer prices are expected to have risen 0.2% in July, in line with the monthly increase seen in June. So this is telling us that our prices of our products that we're paying for and the goods and services we're paying for is increasing month over month. So, you know, that gallon of milk that costed $4 is gonna cost 0.2%, maybe more in the next month. So these are the expectations. So the market is expecting it to be a 0.2% increase from June to July. Now, here's where you'll see a lot of market fluctuation. If 
tomorrow the CPI data comes in and this number is not 0.2%, say it's 0.4% or 0.5%, that's going to send the market into a panic because we're expecting to have a small increase in prices. And if we have a huge increase in prices that we're not expecting, that's going to cause the market to have this sort of panic. And you're going to see the market have this huge fluctuation. You might see some stocks sold off. So you got to be very careful about how this CPI data could actually make a difference. Now, on the other hand, let's say that we're expecting 0.2% in July. But what happens is that it comes in at like 0.1 or maybe there's zero change in from June to July. You might see a market rally because the inflation values are cooling off faster than what's expected, which might be better for us. So that basically is what's it for today's video here. So again, make sure that you set your calendars up at 830 in the morning tomorrow for the CPI data to come out. They always release the document. You could read into it and be careful. Again, if you're looking about trading in the market or looking at investing, be careful because this might fluctuate these prices quite a bit. So that is it for today's video here. Again, hopefully you learned two important topics about the CPI and the PPI data. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Again, if you made it this far in the video, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on bell notifications. On Friday, we will be covering my net worth review for week six. Hope everybody has a great rest of your day, and I will see you all on Friday.